Hello and welcome to another YouTube video. This time we're going to look at chapter 3 which is data transmission. So the first thing we need to look at is what's actually contained inside a data packet because data transmission is all about the sending of packets. So in any network packets of information or data have to be sent from A to B and it can go in a number of different routes around the network. Inside our data packet, we have three distinct parts. We have the header, we have the message or the data itself, and we have the footer. Now there's two types of data transmission we need to be aware of for our exam, and those are serial and parallel transmissions. In a serial transmission, all of our data is sent one bit at a time. It uses a single cable, and therefore this method is cheaper because we're only using one piece of copper in order to send our data. Serial transmission is usually used over long distances because the signal tends to be stronger. For example, USB and SATA cables use serial transmission, and that's what the S stands for. So what about parallel then? Parallel just means we've got multiple cables in order to send our data down. We can send our data more than one bit at a time. But it all depends on your word length. So if you've got a 32-bit system, you should have 32 tiny wires sending bits of data down at the same time. And this will mean that it's faster at sending bits because you've got more opportunity to send more bits at one time. An example of this is the old style printers that are not USB, with a large connector port with lots of different pins, those use parallel transmission. So now let's have a look at the advantages and disadvantages of serial versus parallel. Well, serial is very cheap, it's very reliable over long distances, whereas parallel sends multiple bits at one time. The disadvantages with this is that data needs to arrive at exactly the same time and sync up so that it all gets processed at the same time. We also have the problem with crosstalk because we're using multiple wires and crosstalk comes from electrical interference on the cable and this can sometimes cause damage to the bits that we're trying to send. Another potential problem with parallel transmission is the connector contains lots of pins. It takes up a large amount of physical space and the potential for the pins to get damaged is quite high and this will affect the number of bits that we can read once it's connected to the motherboard. For serial disadvantages, there's not that many at all. You could say that serial transmission is slower in the short term, whereas parallel can send multiple bits quite quickly at one time. Okay, so time to move on. We're going to look now at our communication channels, and we use these communication channels in computer networking. And these communication channels provide pathways to convey information. So we've got three different types that we need to know. We've got simplex, half duplex and full duplex transmissions. So the first question that we're going to look at is how will data be transmitted? So in a full duplex transmission, data travels in both directions at the same time on the transmission medium. And the transmission medium can be an ethernet cable, an optical fiber cable, or any transmission medium that you may have. In our half duplex transmission, data can travel in both directions, but it can only be traveling in one direction at a time. And then finally, for our simplex transmission, it's probably the most simple one of them all, data can only travel in one direction. In your exam, the most likely question to get for this is they will give you a scenario and you would have to recommend which data transmission you would use. So let me give you some real world examples as to where these transmissions will actually be used then. So for a simplex transmission, we will use things like our satellite dish because we only need to receive data to display it on our TV screens. In a half duplex transmission, we'll use walkie talkies because data can be transmitted and then it gets received at the other end and then we transmit our message back to somebody else. So at any one time, we can't communicate with each other in a two-way fashion. It must transmit the data to one side, get received, and then we must transmit back so that the other person can hear what we've said. For our full duplex transmission, we use a mobile phone. 
because if I call you, I can talk to you and you can interrupt me and talk back to me. So the data is flowing backwards and forwards in a two-way transmission. Now we're going to look at something called multiplexing. And the benefits of multiplexing means that data transmission speeds can be increased by multiplexing. So let's have a look at what it is. It is a method of combining several independent data sources for sending along a single route to get to a single destination. And this is usually done on the same wire. So as you can see from the diagram, we've got three independent data sources. We send them and combine all the signals onto one transmission medium, and then we demultiplex at the end and send them to the relevant destinations. So now we need to look at how our packets make their way around the network once they leave our machine. There's two different ways of sending them around our network. There's packet and circuit switching. So large networks, such as the internet, need to be able to find their way around to any destination address. And packets can often find different routes to end up at the same destination. And this is very similar to my route home. So the question is, how do I find my way from my college to my home address? Now I could take this route here, go through Failsworth and end up at my home address, which turns out is a football museum. But what if there's a problem just before Failsworth? If I was going there again, I'd get there and I'd know that there's an issue and I'd reroute myself and go via Broadway. And that would get me to the same place and all I've done is I've rerouted myself and but what if there was a problem there? Then what I'd do this time is I would find an alternative address and I maybe go right all the way down to Droylsden and then across into Manchester. Or I could be really silly and go all the way through Middleton, past Simister Island, through Presswich and end up at the same place. Well, that's great, but what I'm trying to show you here is that this is exactly the same as any network. The packets have to be able to find their way around and they have to be adaptable and get to the destination via many, many different routes because we never know what's going on on our network. The one method of doing this is circuit switching and this is quite a rigid method. So there's a path across the network. It needs to be set up in advance of our transmission. There is no rerouting here. All the packets are sent in order down the same route. And that route is non-flexible. And if you think back to the old school telephone operators, she sets up the route between the person on one end of the line and the person on the other end of the line. And then it never changes until the phone is hung up. The major problem with circuit switching is that if the route fails, we have to start again. And that wastes bandwidth. And no other device can access our circuit while we are in transmission. And that's the reason we get an engaged dial tone when someone else is using the phone. But what about the other method, packet switching? Well, these packets are very smart. This allows for packets to travel independently through the network and each packet decides its own route and it's determined by the line available on the network. So if the line is heavy or the traffic is busy, then we will reroute in a different direction. Communication here is not broken if part of the network is unavailable. The packets will just reroute themselves. The problem with this is that the packets will not arrive in necessarily the same order that they were sent in. So this requires extra processing when the packets arrive to put them all back in order. And that was a whistle stop tour on the first part of the data transmission chapter. In the next video, what we're going to discuss is the use of protocols, what protocols are, TCP IP protocols and the stack it's involved in and the typical contents of a packet. And we'll even cover things such as network collisions and network collision detection and how these are dealt with. So hopefully you'll be able to join me for the next video.